I've been waiting three years to make this video. When I was expecting these capture cards to start releasing, my kid was just being born. And now he's walking and talking and doing his own thing. HDMI 2.1 capture cards are finally coming. If that doesn't mean anything to you, that means 4K, 120, and 144 hertz pass through from the next generation of consoles, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, multiple generations of graphics cards now. And it means capturing it in 4K 60 over USB for the first time pretty much ever. This is a big deal, even though it doesn't seem like it, and I'm kind of a little disappointed. Here's everything you need to know. Just a reminder, there is one week left on the OBS Definitive Guide pre-sale. This is the most in-depth, hand-holdy, teach you everything you possibly need to know from complete beginner status up to doing some of the most advanced stuff you can do with OBS available on the internet. I've been cooking it up for six months. I'm just wrapping up production now, and I extended the pre-sale period where you get 50% off the lowest price I will ever offer this course regardless of whatever sale I do in the future. I've extended it to June 9th, so I heard some of you all say that May 31st was not late enough for, for your budgets or whatever, that's fine. You got till June 9th, pick it up, don't miss the pre-sale discount. It's, it's, it's a lot of content. I've rendered out the first four of 10 chapters and we're already at 51 videos and seven hours of content. So, whew, there's a lot. That's eposfox.gg slash presale. This past week was Computex, a big tech showcase event, kind of like CES, that takes place in Taiwan. And I never go to this because ditching my wife and kid to spend a week in Taiwan getting the same news that I could just get over the internet or have review samples in hand that I'll get a couple weeks later is never really worth it. But we did get some announcements and a couple videos of hands-on with some new capture cards. First and foremost was Avermedia out the gate with their announcements. Now we did have a leak a little bit before this, which actually featured three capture cards and we've only had announcements for two. But the first two that they announced are the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K 2.1 and the Live Gamer Ultra 2.1. And these are updates to their PCIe and USB cards, respectively, that add HDMI 2.1 pass-through support. So that's 4K, 120, and 144 hertz pass-through for the next generation of consoles over HDMI. We have been desperately waiting for capture cards to support this spec since the new console's releases in fall of 2020. Everyone with their new fancy 4K 120 hertz OLED monitors and their new consoles have been wanting a way to keep their TVs format while streaming, and in terms of capture card support, this has not existed. We were given very sparse details, and in fact, we didn't find out until the short circuit video where Jake was playing around with them that we can actually capture 4K60 out of these in the first place, which includes the USB model. The USB model may be limited to MJPEG encoding based on screenshots of the Avermedia gaming app in the corner of the video. We don't know yet. I did notice that we could get NV12 video recording out of the, P out of the PCIe model, the live camera 4K, which is pretty good. This means 420 chromosome sampling. MJPEG is pre-compressed video, which is the only way most cards have done any high spec stuff over USB thus far. However, Jake also noted that the USB capture card is USB 10 gig which means it would support a standard NV12 uncom uncompressed signal of 4K60 over USB. So regardless, we're getting our first USB capture cards that are going to be 4K60 capture, which is great. We've been waiting forever for that. Our only option for this has been the Elgato 4K60S Plus, which they have actually discontinued, and it was a capture card designed to record to an SD card. And they enabled the ability to capture in 4K60 over USB with this, but there was multiple seconds of lag because it was doing all the processing on the box. It wasn't, you couldn't use it for streaming. It wasn't that useful to use connected to the computer. It was supposed to record to an SD card. We haven't had anything else that uses standard USB to do this. I've been begging capture card companies for years to utilize the 10 and 20 gigabit per second ports that have been commonplace on desktop motherboards for years and years now. Looks like this is finally happening. I am super stoked. Then we had an announcement from Asus, which I did not expect to be the first one to actually confirm the 4K60 spec, but they were with what they're calling, I gotta I got read this again. It is the Tough Gaming Capture Box 4K Pro, which is a ridiculously over too, you know, way too wordy of a name. It sounds like one of those Cloner Alliance names where they always call it the, the Capture Box, the Flint Box, the, the 4K Box or whatever. 
Way too long of a name, but effectively it's an upgrade to their Tough Gaming CU4K30 capture card, which was one of my favorites over the past couple years, using the same Cintron chipset that all the USB capture cards were releasing over the past couple years and released with, which means you get updated for 4K 144Hz, HDMI 2.1 pass-through with 4K 60 capture over USB. ASUS was the first one to publicly confirm you could do 4K 60 capture over USB. I forgot to mention that the ASUS Tough 4K Pro will be UVC, which means it's plug and play, as will the Live Gamer Ultra, which means they're plug and play, no driver needed, though the software will allow you to control things like the audio and the RGB and things like that. But that also means there's hope for Linux aboard. Both of these are a big deal, the Asus and the Avermedia. They are a huge deal, I am super stoked, but there are some things you need to know about these because I am kind of disappointed in some of the, the consequences of what we're getting at the moment. First and foremost, there is no 4K 120 or 144 hertz capture. There just isn't. Jake was talking to the Avermedia people in their video about it, and they said it's possible, but it would be cost prohibitive to do so. That's not true. And I don't have, obviously, the, the, the hardware engineering background to tell you as to why that's not true. All I can tell you is that there are cards being developed that have it. Yuan, the company that makes a lot of the capture cards, as in ODM or OEM, for other capture card companies to kind of disseminate to the public. Elgato uses a lot of Yuan designs for their capture cards. Yuan has a booth that was right across the, the, the aisle from Avermedia at Computex, where they have an HDMI 2.1 capture card that can capture 4K at full frame rate which means Magewell probably has one coming too. The Magewell capture card, yes, it will be very expensive. But the Yuan one, once run through Elgato, theoretically won't be that much more expensive. The, the Avermedia cards are both $300, which is great because their 4K60 cards launched in 2017 or 2018 at this point were about $400 each, which was a good deal at the time. But, it, you know, we're, we're seeing price decreases for these new upgraded models. But regardless, 4K120 is definitely possible at the moment. So I'm pretty miffed that it's just not a thing, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. It's super weird. That is one of the bigger disappointments. We don't know any information regarding the Avermedia cards if they're still gonna support 444 Chroma subsampling, which is a big deal for scaling text and other UI elements, retro games. And we don't know full details regarding the VRR, variable refresh rate capabilities. We did see patches released for a lot of the capture cards from the last few years to add VRR past their support. This worked great for consoles, but didn't really help a lot of PC users so much because Elgato with their HD60X was the only officially compatible G-Sync one, and it still required an HDMI 2.1 monitor. So basically a big OLED TV running G-Sync over that. That, that. that was the only way you could use G-Sync. So if you had FreeSync or if you had a console, it worked okay, but the, but the VRR ranges were still pretty limited where you could still get tearing and all of them still had some frame pacing issues. We don't know this information about the new cards. I'm hoping it's gonna be more compatible. I'm hoping since it's full HDMI 2.1 spec, G-Sync is gonna be enabled across the board. You're still gonna need an HDMI 2.1 display, but hopefully we don't need individual cards to certify this, but we don't know any of that yet. And it looks like audio ports on these cards is also pretty limited at the moment, which as of a couple years ago when like the NZXT capture cards released and stuff, audio chipsets were hugely in shortages due to all the COVID craziness. So I don't know if that's still affecting cards now. Uh, I don't even think we have in the pictures. I don't, I don't know if Avermedia's cards have audio jacks, but the Asus one, the Tough Capture Gaming 4K Box Pro, whatever. It has dual uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks for audio pass through, which is great, both for hooking up your own headphones or whatever to the capture card, but also for two PC setup, makes it a lot easier. Both Asus and Avermedia have focused a lot of their marketing copy or discussions or things they want the people at the show to focus on, on their RGB controls. Which tells me they don't have a whole lot with regards to the specs and capture capabilities to flex on, which is kind of weird. Now, I realize that all of these complaints seem like a big Debbie Downer. Obviously, most people aren't going to be making 4K 120 FPS videos. A lot of people aren't going to be doing that kind of thing. And based on the demos from the Live Gamer 4K 2.1, you'll be able to downscale your 4K 120 gameplay to 1440p 120 or 1080p 120, which is still great there too. You can still get some high frame rate capture. But it just gives me the, the feeling that we're not getting the full HDMI 2.1 upgrade, which is pretty disappointing 
three years into this generation of tech and gaming and consoles and TVs. Like, it feels like we're not getting the full package, which is pretty disappointing in a way. And again, it's a niche feature, but it's one that, for the 4K60 round of capture cards, we were able to do. We, we, we got that up front at the 4K60 Pro with the Live Gamer 4K. And suddenly, everything's being hamstrung or, like, limited to what the USB cards can do. And that doesn't feel right. There are use cases for where you'd want to do that. Slow-mo or just recording everything because you want to. If you want to kind of future-proof, because what if YouTube turns on 120 FPS mode sometime soon? I just saw some language from their high, from their support pages where they've updated it to mention possible 120 FPS support. Since you can technically stream 120 FPS to Twitch, and YouTube now has all this HEVC and AV1 encoding support for higher quality for your bitrate, they may want to compete with Twitch in the high frame rate market. Suddenly you can't do that anymore. You can't do the highest format that YouTube can stream. And then there's people like the folks over at Digital Foundry and other competitors that want to do frame rate analysis videos and things like that that still do not have tools that exist to be able to do so. It just, it, it feels really weird. I'm hoping Elgato comes through, but despite all of these announcements, we got crickets from, from Team Blue, are they, over there? Uh, you would think at this point, especially with how long everyone's been waiting, it would be time to at least get some sort of teaser of like, hey, you know it's coming, right? You don't even gotta tell us anything. Just, you know it's coming. But nothing. I also find this complaint worthy because in all of the discussions, and we could be wrong, we do not have full specs yet, I don't have hands-on, I'm getting everything sent to me to review as soon as I can. It'll come when it's ready. Everything mentions 1080p 240 FPS and 1440p 120 FPS. That was last gen's spec. We could already do 1080p 240 and 1440p120 on the last generation of cards from six years ago. And that's being touted as like a spec worth marketing over telling us the rest of the information on all of these cards. Which is concerning because HDMI 2.1 supports 1080p 360 and 1440p 240, which a lot of people have been waiting on capture card support for. And from the live demos on short circuit to the specs listed on these sheets, everything mentions 1080p 240 and 1440p120. I'm very concerned about that. A lot of you all are still going to be left hanging without a capture card to use here if it doesn't support it. And unlike 4K120, there aren't like scalers you could get to like convert that down to 1080p or something. Like when you get past 120 FPS, you don't have any hardware support. It's really weird. And this is what I was worried about whenever I have mentioned in predictions a couple times now, whenever we start getting these cards, I don't think anyone knows exactly what to do with VRR, variable refresh rate stuff. I don't think anyone knows how to handle all these higher frame rates. A lot of people want the ability to record the entire variable refresh rate kind of spectrum for whatever reason. Again, frame rate analysis for controlling the frame rate after the fact, whatever. I don't think any of these cards are going to do that either. I'm excited though. This is a big deal. We've been waiting three years for this. I am super stoked. I just want to be realistic about what these cards are going to be able to do. I also wanted to just quickly highlight that Cooler Master has also announced their own line of Stream Deck competitors. It's called like the, the Control Center or Control Master Control Hub or something like that. They're basically taking the modular approach, like the Pallet Gear, also now called the Monogram Console of editing devices, where you have your different little modules, like your, your Stream Deck and then some dials and some rollers and some other stuff to kind of piece together your kit. It's going to be more expensive. And I'm super nervous about these kinds of things because anytime you look at like modular phone projects or the red camera phone or whatever, the ecosystem never develops and then it's a bad idea to invest in because you never get the added features you want later and blah, blah, blah. But they have a lot up front to the extent that I'm, I'm nervously excited. I can't wait to test it out because more competition in the space is good, but Cooler Master's last foray into the streaming space was not super great. So we'll see. Lots of cool lots of news over at Computex. Go check out everyone else's videos, of course. And remember to be kind, rewind. I'm coming back, baby. I know I've been quiet for a while. I'm coming back.